Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back, uh, as we have discussed the pharmacology of tocolytics or tocolytic agents, now we will be talking about uterotonics. From the term it is clear, it is apparent that uh, these will be the drugs that can stimulate the tone of the uterus, uterine tone. So, they are also otherwise called uterine stimulants and there is another term which is also used interchangeably to refer to all uterine stimulants, it is ecbolics. So, the same group of drugs will be called uterotonics or uterine more simply uterine stimulants or ecbolics. They are basically used for two major purpose, one to augment or induce labor and for prevention or treatment of postpartum hemorrhage. Postpartum hemorrhage is a condition where after childbirth there is uterine bleeding. So, as the baby is born and then the placenta is delivered, the uterus should contract and the natural uterine contraction will prevent any kind of bleeding from the uterus. Normally, there will be very minor amount of bleeding with the childbirth, but the uterine contraction will promptly control this bleeding normally. But if for whatever reasons particularly the most common cause of persistent bleeding following the childbirth is the bits of placenta while the placenta is being delivered it, if it is not properly delivered then bits of placenta is left behind as a result of that the uterus really cannot contract properly. So, there is because of lack of uterine contraction there is bleeding. So, proper and appropriate placental delivery and complete placental delivery is important, but then there are other reasons also for which the mother can continue to bleed in the uterus and there could be even profuse bleeding which can be even fatal. So, after delivery it is happening, so it is called postpartum hemorrhage. Now, physiologically to prevent postpartum hemorrhage, the hormone that is active that is a post posterior pituitary hormone and that is oxytocin. Oxytocin is the natural uterotonic agent and there are also other drugs exogenous substances which can have properties similar to that of oxytocin. So, together all such drugs which can stimulate the uterus particularly stimulating uterine contraction they are called uterotonic agents. So, there are some uterotonic drugs which are actually analogs of oxytocin synthetic oxytocin or oxytocin analogs besides there are other types of drugs like argot derivatives argot alkaloids and prostaglandin analogs they are also share the property of oxytocin that in, in the sense that they also would be causing uterine contraction. So, they all these three groups of drugs oxytocin and oxytocics or synthetic oxytocin, oxytocin like substances, oxytocin congeners or analogs one group, second group is argot alkaloids or argot derivatives and the third group is prostaglandin analogs prostaglandins, some of the prostaglandins themselves and also their analogs. So, all together they will be called uterotonics, these are the three major groups of drugs. 
So, we have classified euterotonics as oxytocics that means synthetic oxytocin and oxytocin analogues like carbetocin, des amino oxytocin. We have argot derivatives, methyl argot argonovin and argometrin. Then we have prostaglandins and their analogues particularly prostaglandin E2 and its analog dinoprostone, dinoprostone actually, prostaglandin F2 alpha and its analog carboprost and prostaglandin E1 analog that is misoprostol. So, these are the different types of prostaglandins and their analogues that are used clinically in the management of uh, postpartum hemorrhage. Now, coming to oxytocin, oxytocin being a hormone it acts via specific receptors oxytocin receptors that are located in uterine tissue. So, oxytocin causes receptor mediated enhancement of force and frequency of rhythmic contraction of uterus and that happens during labor and particularly it is the fundus and the body of the uterus which will contract while the lower portion of uterus lower uterine segment and the uh, and the cervix they will remain relaxed. So, that is how it will facilitate uh, the movement of the of the fetus downward and thereby birth, or birth is facilitated, childbirth is facilitated. So, that is a physiological function of oxytocin and when under certain clinical situations it is required to be given from outside we will be providing we will be we administer synthetic oxytocin or oxytocin like substances which will produce similar which will exert similar properties as oxytocin. Now, oxytocin really speaking is uh, acts as a prodrug and its active metabolite that is oxytocin triphosphate uh, it activates the sensitive calcium channels and they mobilize intracellular calcium and this intracellular calcium availability will cause contraction of the myometria. Now, oxytocin induced uterine contraction is at its best at TARP. In the early pregnancy, the sensitivity of the uterus to oxytocin is relatively less as compared to in later pregnancy or the later part of pregnancy as we as it approaches towards TARP. So, it is actually in labor where oxytocin effect is maximum. After the childbirth also uh, there will be some effect of oxytocin, but that is more in the in the breast tissue rather than in uterine tissue. Okay. So, more effect is seen in the breast tissue, but immediately after birth also the oxytocin will have its action in order to prevent the uh, postpartum hemorrhage that is normal physiological function of oxytocin. Besides its own uh, stimulating property on the on the uterus because of the uterine contraction and the childbirth process there will be local tissue damage or local trauma and this will initiate or this will facilitate prostaglandin synthesis or prostaglandin production at the local site. And this prostaglandin again has a property to centrally act on the uh, posterior pituitary and thereby augmenting further oxytocin release, physiological oxytocin release. So, there will be more uterine contractions. The other actions of oxytocin would include one of the major action is facilitating milk ejection acting at the breast. Uh, in fact, it will it will immediately after birth when the baby will be sucking the breast that will stimulate the milk lating and that is actually facilitated by oxytocin. Oxytocin also causes vasodilation, it causes tachycardia, it has also uh, because of its structural resemblance with another posterior pituitary hormone and that is anti, uh, anti diuretic hormone or the other for name for it is vasopressin and uh, oxytocin also has a mild anti diuretic action. Besides this oxytocin is also believed to enhance intimacy in 
in human relationship and in physical relationships also. In fact, it is said that during sexual orgasm, the oxytocin has an important role to play. Coming to the different uses of oxytocin, if we, if we try to remember in terms of its use prior to labor, its use during labor and its use after labor. So, all uses, most of the uses are around labor, if we say. So, prior to labor, when labor is not progressing for, uh, has not started real, really not progressing, has not started and pregnancy is getting continued prolonged. So, in such a situation for induction of labor and that has to be done in very selected cases, slow intravenous infusion 5 international unit in 500 milliliter of normal saline with close monitoring of uterine activity that will help in induction of labor. So, labor pain will be initiated and then labor will progress. Then the question of labor has started, but it is not progressing. So, in such a situation also oxytocin might have a role and oxytocin is actually used for augmentation of labor 2 to 5 international unit of oxytocin given by slow intravenous infusion. Okay. In the same manner, same strategy slow intravenous infusion 5 in uh, 2 to 5 units in normal saline and closely monitor. So, continue this labor will be progressing. After the childbirth after labor has uh, been completed, even after delivery of the placenta, if there is, it is found that the mother is bleeding profusely, what is called postpartum hemorrhage. In such a situation also oxytocin can be used for preventing or controlling postpartum hemorrhage. In this case, 5 units intramuscularly can be given or if necessary, one can also give intravenous infusion slowly. We have another option to use desamino oxytocin, which is a buccal formulation and from that buccal site oxytocin gets released and gets absorbed and this may be also used in the same above indications alternatively. So, that is an advantage in situations at peripheral centers where uh, intravenous administration might be logistically may not be possible they are this desamino oxytocin which is a buccal formulation that can that has offered a good solution. For the same indications and they will it will also produce similar kind of benefits. So, far as the safety issues concerned with the use of oxytocin adverse drug reactions with faster infusion or with larger doses do happen particularly in reference to forceful uterine contraction and sustained uterine contraction which may lead to uterine rupture. There is also possibility of injury to the fetus because of this uh, too much of strong contractions. Then there might be fetal asphyxia, then there is water intoxication that can be linked to its weak ADH activity or antidiuretic hormone like activity. There are some conditions where oxytocin should not be used that is contraindications of oxytocin use cephalopelvic disproportion because oxytocin is being used for hastening or facilitating vaginal delivery. But if there is a disproportion between the head of the child and the pelvis maternal pelvis, maternal pelvis is smaller in size in order to, in order to allow the uh, fetal head to negotiate. So, that is what is called cephalopelvic disproportion and in such a situation if oxytocin is given it will only cause injury to the uterus, uterine rupture, injury to the fetus because simply because of the mechanical disproportion, mechanical block the baby cannot be born. Besides breech presentation, oxytocin is given when there is normal presentation, normal vertex presentation or head presentation. But in, instead, if there is presentation by the buttock of the baby, that is what is called breast presentation, in such a situation of giving oxytocin is not uh, advisable because that will uh, again will cause problem because the rotation will not happen properly. Third is about the position of the placenta, okay, if it is in the birth canal, thereby obstructing the passage of the, uh, of the baby, that is what is called placenta previa. In such situation also 
it is uh, oxytocin is not indicated. Besides of course, if there is already fetal distress, oxytocin will only further augment it and it is not advisable to start oxytocin therapy in such situations. The answer is one has to go for caesarean delivery, caesarean section. Next we come to another group and that is argot derivatives. We have argot argometrin, methyl argonovin or methyl argometrin and we have dihydroargonovin. So, these are the three molecules that can be used for similar kind of reasons. They argot derivatives they cause rhythmic myometrial contractions alternating with relaxations which is physiological resembling the physiological uterine contractions, but the problem is it involves unlike oxytocin it involves fundus, body and cervical segments all together. While oxytocin it causes upper uterine segment contraction and the lower segment and the cervix relaxation. In this case argot derivatives they cause contraction of the whole uterus and also the cervix. So, that may cause a problem, create a problem. In higher doses, there is sustained contraction with no relaxation in between and in such a situation naturally then there might be also problems with uh, distress to the fetus, fetal uh, uh, asphyxia and uh, also maternal injury can happen. The adverse drug reactions associated with use of argot derivatives starting with nausea or vomiting to headache and decrease of milk secretion in the mother and some of the contraindications where argot derivatives better not to be used are angina in of the mother, myocardial infarction, transient ischemic attack, history of transient ischemic attack so and hypertension because argot derivatives they can raise blood pressure and thereby they can compromise the uh, coronary circulation, they can compromise the uh, the uh, microcirculation in other vital organs. So, these are the situations where it is better not to uh, not to use argot derivatives for treatment of uh, these conditions. How they are used argot derivatives? There are again in third stage of labor if there is uterine atony and the labor is not progressing in order to facilitate vaginal delivery one can think of giving 0.2 to 0.5 milligram of argometrin intramuscular injection after the anterior shoulder is delivered. That means, when the process of uh, delivery has started, but then it is not uh, progressing further. So, in such a situation an intramuscular injection of uh, argometrin 0.2 or 2.5 milligram that will help in, in smooth vaginal delivery. It is also used in prevention and treatment of postpartum hemorrhage and same dose argometrin uh, intramuscular 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 milligram intramuscular for the prevention or treatment of postpartum hemorrhage after normal or after caesarean delivery can be tried. And finally, for after the childbirth during the puerperal phase, mothers who are multipara who has already given birth to multiple children and these mothers they find it difficult to get their uterine tone. Uh, recovered or uh, resumed uh, quite quickly or quite fast. So, in such a situation because the involution normal involution is delayed in multipara to hasten that to facilitate that one can think of using oral argometrin at a small dose that is 0 0.1 to 5 milligram 3 times a day for 7 days treatment that can help in relatively quicker involution of, uh, of the uterus. And finally, come to the uh, third group and that is prostaglandins and their analogs. The prostaglandin E2 and its synthetic analog dinoproston and prostaglandin F2 alpha and its synthetic analog carboprost or prostaglandin E1 analog that is misoprostol. So, they are used uh, for similar indication similar purposes. Misoprostol is found to be effective in both cervical ripening, cervical ripening means cervical thinning or cervical effacement. So, so that the, uh, the delivery, vaginal delivery is facilitated. So, misoprostol is effective in doing that and thereby for induction of labor. Uh, in this respect, misoprostol which is a PG 
prostaglandin E1 analog is actually as good as dinoproston, uh, which is which is a uh, prostaglandin F2, uh, which is a prostaglandin E2 analog, dinoproston, and uh, it is better tolerated than dinoproston, and it is more economic than dinoproston. So, if you compare misoprostol and dinoproston, misoprostol is a PGE1 analog, and dinoproston is a PGE2 analog. So, E1 analog misoprostol fares better superior than dinoproston. It is uh, equi efficacious, but better tolerated, better safety profile and uh, lesser costly, less cost. On the other hand, if you think of the prostaglandin F2 alpha analog that is carboprost, uh, carboprost tromethamine, it is effective in treating the treatment resistant cases of PPH due to uterine atony. That means, while the other uh, measures whether it is argot derivatives or it is oxytocin analogs, they have been used, but it has they have not been able to really uh, achieve the goal treatment goal. In such a situation, one can think of using carboprost and uh, carboprost is given intramuscular injection 0.25 milligram every hour and it causes prompt and sustained contraction. So, as soon as contractions are achieved, then the it its uh, administration has to be discontinued. And we need to remember that uh, these prostaglandins, prostaglandin analogs should not be used simultaneously with oxytocin, because they can synergize and they can cause very strong uterine contractions, which may lead to uterine rupture. So, then we have three major groups. Uh, oxytocin and oxytocin analogs, we have argot derivatives and we have prostaglandins, each has their uh, the, the pros and cons, but uh, most out of all these three, uh, oxytocin is the primary choice for the treatment for augmentation of labor, for induction of labor in selected cases and also for prevention and treatment of postpartum hemorrhage. Argometrin or methyl argometrin is also a good choice, and uh, methyl argometrin also has a uh, has a oral preparation, which can be used for uh, early uh, recovery or of of bringing back of uterine tone in case of multipara. That is what is called involution of the uterus, and finally we have different uh, prostaglandin analogs and which can be used in resistant cases of uh, uterine atony for delivery of the for, for hastening the uh, labor augmentation of labor. So, with this thank you very much.